On today's show, Nissan wants to sell more of its high-performance Nismo cars. BMW creates a hydrogen refueling station for the future. And Toyota says its wild FT4X concept isn't too far off from being production ready. All that and more coming right up on AutoLine Daily. This is AutoLine Daily, the show dedicated to enthusiasts of the automotive industry. Late last year, Waymo, Google's autonomous ride-sharing service, purchased 100 Chrysler Pacifica hybrid minivans from SEA and equipped them with its self-driving technology. The company has been testing them with a limited number of people, but now it's ready to expand the service. It's inviting residents in the Phoenix area to apply to try the vehicles out in their everyday lives. To support this expansion, Waymo is buying an additional 500 Pacifica hybrids from SEA and will use feedback from the users to improve the technology. Public hydrogen refueling stations are pretty rare, but if fuel cell cars really catch on, a lot more are going to be needed. And to give us an idea of what they could look like in the future, Shell commissioned BMW's design studio subsidiary, DesignWorks, to create a new hydrogen dispenser. Current ones are based on gasoline or diesel pumps, but this one is simple looking and hides all of its mechanical parts. The screen on the dispenser displays info like refueling time, price, or it lets users access a map to check out for route details. The nozzle has been reworked and kind of almost looks like an EV plug. It too features a display screen to help guide users through the refueling process. The new dispenser, called Oasis, is on display this week at the Hanover Fair in Germany. And for a closer look at the viability of fuel cell cars, check out our recent AutoLine This Week with representatives from Honda, GM, and the National Renewable Energy Lab to hear their take on the issue. You can watch that show on AutoLine.tv or just look for it on our YouTube channel. We'll be back with more right after this. AutoLine Daily is brought to you by Bridgestone Tires, your journey, our passion. Dow Automotive Systems, advanced materials that deliver better results. Lear, a global leader in automotive seating and electrical systems. And by Borg Warner, propulsion solutions that support a clean, energy efficient world. Earlier this month at the New York Auto Show, Toyota took the wraps off a boldly designed SUV concept called the FT4X. But even though the styling is fairly radical, the president of Toyota's Kelty Research Center, Kevin Hunter, told AutoLine that the concept isn't too far off from being production ready. Even though the, you know, we, we designed this kind of X-body theme, uh, it's meant to look protective through the passenger area and then the plan views kick in so it pops the wheels out and has a nice muscular capable stance. Mm-hmm. Uh, but all the sheet metal we think is doable, the door cuts, hood cuts, the bumper construction, it's a very component-driven design, so in that respect it's very customizable and we think we could build it. You can watch that full discussion and our other New York Auto Show interviews on Autoline.tv. Just look for the Autoline on the Road section, or you can find them on our YouTube channel. Nissan's first Nismo-branded mainstream car came out in 2013, and today Nismo sells about 15,000 vehicles branded with its name around the globe, but it wants to boost that business. So Nissan has created a new unit called the Nismo Cars Business Department to do just that. It will draw talent from several companies within the Nissan Group too, expand the Nismo range into new segments, market them more globally, boost the lineup in existing markets, and work to develop the products in a shorter amount of time. As part of this plan, you'll finally start to see Nismo-branded road cars in Nissan dealerships and showrooms. Coming up next, without the new Honda Ridgeline, mid-sized truck sales would be down this year. We'll take a closer look at that right after this. The midsize pickup truck segment has seen a resurgence in the U.S. over the last couple of years, thanks to new trucks from GM, Toyota, and Honda. According to Ward's Auto Data, 
In the first three months of the year, sales were just below 100,000 units, up 2.5% compared to the first quarter in 2016. But even though the segment was up, most mid-sized trucks actually saw their sales slide. The Toyota Tacoma is number one, with over 43,000 sold in Q1, which is down 2.5%. The Chevy Colorado is next at over 22,000 units sold, down a little over 1%. And the long-in-the-tooth Nissan Frontier saw its sales plunge 27%. Honda sold more than 9,700 Ridgelines. However, we can't compare it to the year before since it wasn't on sale yet. But without those sales, the entire midsize segment would be down. And based on other results, it does appear the new Ridgeline could be stealing sales from its competition. The GMC Canyon was down slightly in the first quarter as well. The overall car market is down so far this year in the U.S., so it's going to be interesting to see if the midsize truck segment will continue to grow. And speaking of trucks, here's an interesting EV startup worth keeping an eye on. Bollinger Motors will unveil its prototype this year for the world's first all-electric off-road and on-road sport truck. The vehicle doesn't have a name yet, but it does have a unique setup. It starts with an all-aluminum frame. Bolted to that are dual electric motors, portal gearboxes, inboard mounted brakes, and an adjustable hydropneumatic suspension. Bollinger says it will have best-in-class horsepower, torque, ground clearance, and power-to-weight ratio. One thing it won't have, though, is a complex design. The vehicle looks to be the true definition of a box on wheels. But that's it for today. Thanks for watching, and please join us again tomorrow.